Good morning. Thank you for joining me for this meditation time. I am outside at the Columbarium here at Hedrick's Grove Church. I thought that uh, with uh, using some of the new technology that I've been using that it would be nice to bring it outside for this morning. Now our scripture text today comes from 1 Corinthians, the 7th chapter, the 17th through the 24th verses. Nevertheless, each person should live as a believer in whatever situation the Lord has assigned to them, just as God has called them. This is the rule I lay down in the churches. Was a man already circumcised when he was called? He should not become uncircumcised. Was he uncircumcised when he was called? He should not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing. Keeping God's commands is what counts. Each person should remain in a situation where they were in when God called them. Were you a slave when you were called? Don't let it trouble you. Although you can gain your freedom, do so. For the ones who are slave when called into the faith in the Lord is a freed person. Similarly, the ones who was free when called is Christ's slaves. Do You were brought, bought at a price. Do not become slaves of human beings. Brothers and sisters, each person is responsible to God, should remain in the situation they were in when God called them. Sanctifies through your words. Your words are truth, O Lord. Today's text is one of the references um, that is used in the first question of the Heidelberg Catechism, which is the most important um, doctrinal um, piece of information for the Reformed Church. Other than the Bible itself, the Heidelberg Catechism is held up with such a high regard. And the first question of that catechism is, what is my only comfort in life and in death? And if you're not familiar, the catechisms, then there's many of them, um, is a series of questions and answers. And it asks that question and then gives you the answer that my comfort, and I am paraphrasing this morning, there's different translations of the catechism this morning, but my only comfort in life and in death is that I belong body and soul to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ, who at the cost of his own blood fully paid for all of my sins. And that text today from 1 Corinthians is reminding us what is important as God's people. And ultimately what is important is keeping God's actual commands. You know, sometimes we as humans tend to add things to God. And I think that happens a lot around the church. You know, we start thinking that things are important and have to be done a certain way when maybe in fact they truly don't. And Paul is alluding in this scripture to one of the issues that the church at Corinth has. And there is this disagreement over circumcision, you know, because in the Jewish tradition, you were circumcised um, when you were a baby. That was how it was done. The priest came out, you were circumcised. Now, people who are Greek or of different backgrounds, that didn't happen. And already in the early church, you have people who are Jewish converts and people who are Greek converts. And a lot of times the term Greek is pretty much used for anyone who wasn't a Jewish or Hebrew. And I think that that is really important to remember and to acknowledge that, you know, even in the early church, you had um, some disagreement like this, but Paul keeps the focus here on the fact that the uh, purpose is not to worry about those things, that those are, are rules that were made by humankind, but to be focused on God's commandments. So let me uh, ask you to think about something for a moment. Maybe you're, you're frustrated with something or you don't think that somebody is doing what they they should for a moment maybe you should ask you know 
how well am I keeping the commandments? You know, because I think one of the, the most frustrating things to me and the thing that probably at times turns me away from God the most is whenever I see someone who has very strong opinions about how others should live their life, but then I see that they're not living their lives in a godly way. That's a, a very uh, disappointing thing to me. And then this text today gets into the, the bit about slavery. Because in the times in which Paul lived, um, there were people who were both free people and slaves. And Paul is also encouraging people not to worry too much about that because he kind of poignantly with his words explains that uh, if you were a slave and then you came to know Jesus that you have freedom in Christ. But if you're a free person and you came to know Jesus, you actually become a slave to Christ. He kind of does this wordsmithing a little bit I think in a way to acknowledge the fact that that is all temporary, man-made kind of stuff. What is important is where your relationship with Jesus is in fact at. That seems to be what the important thing is, is not those temporary things, but the permanent things. You know, that's one of my hopes is that, that people come to know Christ. And one of the things I enjoy most about ministry often is working with young people because they're a fresh slate and it's so important to gather and reel them in to Christ. But we all have a responsibility as the um, more mature Christians to make sure that we are encouraging people, that we are helping those people to come closer to God, that we are encouraging the young people. Because I know people who discourage young people. You know, they never find anything right. It's always wrong. You know, it's not the least bit hopeful or encouraging. And maybe we need to take a lesson from 1 Corinthians today, not to worry about all of these temporal things, to remember that as Christians, we have our salvation that comes from Almighty God, that our comfort in life and in death, like the Catechism says, is that we belong body and soul, not to ourself, but to our faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, I'm not always faithful. You know, there's times that I'm in fact unfaithful. Now, it doesn't mean that that is my intentions. For the most part, I consider myself an honest person. Yet, there are things that I fail to do. And even though they are an unintentional, it is still a failure. Maybe I promised that I would call you this week, and I forgot. Maybe I told you I would get you a piece of information or send you an email and I forgot. And I do those things and there doesn't a week go by that I probably don't fail someone in some way, shape, or form. Does that make me a bad person? Absolutely not. Does that mean that I'm a failure in my life is worthless? No, absolutely not. But what it does mean is that I am not perfect and I cannot be completely faithful because I am human. And what we need to remember that we serve the risen Christ who is always faithful, always helping us, giving us the information and the love that we need. And so when we let ourselves and others down, that's okay. But we need to remember that Christ will never let us down. Let us pray together. Oh God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the beauty of this day and the fact that you are with us, leading us, and guiding us. Help us to serve you as best as we're able. In the name of our Son, Jesus Christ, your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ 
and the love of Almighty God and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each of you both now and forevermore. Amen.